Okay, now we've covered some of the basics in these last few videos. And in this video, I want to go into a little bit of the optimization, optimizing deliveries, making sure your message gets in the inbox. Now, if you're using a third party service like uh, SendGrid or Amazon SES, they take care of a lot of that for you because of the way they've set up their services. You're basically sending your email to them and in turn, they are sending it out the smart way. But there are a couple of things you need to kind of have set up on your host and domain because um, you want to make sure that, well, a lot of these services out there that receive email on behalf of customers want to make sure that you're not a spammer. So what we're going to do in this video is set up a couple of the technicals that re in reality should already be set up. And you might need to check with your host just to make sure if you're having problems, for example, connecting to uh, SMTP when you're doing a test email, then, hey, you know that there's a problem. Check with your host. Uh, we can't support every host configuration, but what we are going to do is show you uh, with cPanel hosts the way you can check a couple of things and make sure. So, for example, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to check some of the configurations that optimize delivery. Um, one of the things you should have checked is this add xmime ole. This is great for uh, Outlook and says that this is a genuine sender. So you should have that. And if you're using um, your built-in hosts setup, in other words, you're doing it for free rather than using a paid third-party system or Gmail, uh, you want to make sure that you're going to have some of these other options uh, tweaked as well. You want to make sure that you send multi-part emails. Now, we talked about this in the very first video, but this makes sure that you're sending both HTML and plain text emails. Now, our system automatically grabs your content and handles that for you, but you should make sure you have that turned on. Now, another couple of things you can do here is you can enable or disable short links. Um, Bitly is a great link. Uh, building service or link uh, shortening service should I say and to use that all you do is click on here get your API key enter it and you're good to go um, if you find that that might be causing a problem test it turn it off everything here is about testing so you probably before you start broadcasting and blasting you probably want to make sure that you've got um, all of you, you know, create a test list, put a couple of your own emails on it and test broadcasting, making sure that it's getting through to you and everything else before you start blasting everyone and then start wondering what's what's happening, what's gone wrong. So this is kind of the way that we do a lot of tests before we even get started. And um, another thing that you should do is make sure you've got your bounce configuration set. So um, however you want it to go, through, but you can do uh, basically pop email fetch. So basically, if this is your bounce email, so you could have something you would want to create bounce at whatever your domain is, and you would want to come into cPanel. I'm going to do it through cPanel and create a bounce email, and I'm just going to put that on there and I'm going to set it to unlimited create account this way I'm tracking the bounces you can see I've got that email there and then I want to say how, how am I going to do this um, I want to check every say every hour or once every 12 hours once hourly least good I think localhost bounce at the secret art of success.com and then you want to set your password, which I just set, and then you can test your settings. Congratulations, it's working. You're now set up. So now you have your bounces set up, ready to go. And from there, you are pretty much ready from the rapid mailer side. What we need to do now is set up what's called DKIM, SPF, and PTR records. Now. 
This is a little bit technical, but I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Your host should automatically have these. Now, on shared hosts like HostGator and GoDaddy, um, you might need to contact them to test. For example, just to show you on this one, if I bring this over here, and here's a tool we use to uh, test reverse DNS lookup. For example, um, you need an IP address. You need to know the IP of your own host, and you want to put that in there to make sure it resolves. Basically, a reverse DNS is a way for servers to say, hey, you're sending email claiming to be the secret art of success.com. However, the IP address says that you're someone else. What's going on? If that's happening, that kind of is a spam flag and you don't want to get caught with the spam. So you need an IP address and then you reverse DNS lookup. And as you can see here, this is actually one of Facebook's servers. Uh, so again, they have a record of a PTR, um, which is a reverse DNS, a PTR record. And again, your host should have this set up. If you put in your IP address and it doesn't return a actual domain, then you don't have a reverse domain name set up and you need to contact your host. So we'll come over here and if you expand where it says stats, usually this is closed, but in cPanel you can expand this. If you scroll down, you'll find your shared IP address. Copy that and then paste it in and then do a reverse lookup you'll see that this is re uh, reverse DNSing to host2.imsuccesscenter.com. This is on my uh, big box. So there you go. That's already set up. We're all good. Now, again, if you don't have this, you'll need to speak to your host to have them set it up. It should be set up by standard and as default, but it's always best to check if you're having problems delivering this is one of the first things that gets found. The next thing we need to set up now that we've got reverse DNS configured, um, and again, they will set that up for you, reverse DNS, or they will show you where it actually needs to be. For example, and I'll include this link uh, in the bottom of the underneath the video here, but this is, um, oops, that's the wrong one, the wrong resource. Uh, this is the right article. I pulled this for everyone. This is where it talks about reverse DNS and pointer records. And it says that, uh, again, uh, shared and reseller HostGator accounts, for example, already have them set up. If you've got a dedicated or a VPS, they can create that record at your request uh, to your IP address and uh, um, they'll make sure everything's hooked up for you. So. With that being said, let's go up to the next thing, which is DKIM records. Now, a DKIM is basically an authentication method used for verifying that, hey, you're the person uh, at the other end of the domain name. So to set that up, you actually need to, it should be set up by default, but you do need to check with your host to say, hey, do I have DKIM already configured for my account? Now, again, they should do. It should already be set up. And at the same time, you can ask them about your RDNS, DKIM, and SPF records. Say that you need all three enabled and activated for your domain. Give them your domain, which will ask you for anyway, the IP address and everything else, even if you have to create a ticket, even if you just need to validate that they are in place. Because if you're sending with your own host, again, we need to make sure those things are taken care of so you can maximize your delivery. I would hate for you to send out, try and send out a thousand emails and then get a thousand bounces because you couldn't verify or the destination recipient cannot verify um, anything you've got going on. Now, there are a couple of things you can do. D DKIM, again, that's really controlled by the host. And if you're not technically inclined, we do recommend that you have your host set that up for you. That's kind of their job. Um, but if you want to uh, add it yourself or at least try and add it, what you can do is come over to uh, your cPanel, come over to email authentication, and you'll see a couple of options in here. And 
email authentication really enables a couple of features on your setup to uh, basically stop spammers spoofing your email. And it really is a, a method to stop spammers forging emails and everything else. So, you know, basically it just connects the email you send directly to your um, setup and says, yep, this is us. We send it out and it's verified and it's all valid. So you can enable DKIM and it's just a means of verifying incoming email. That doesn't mean that this is stopping spam coming into your box. It's just a way of signing your email going out. So you want to enable that. It takes just a second. And uh, there we go. And then we also want to set up SPF records. Now, SPF records are basically another way of signing uh, your email and doing all the other checks so that if a uh, destination wants to query you'd say hey is this genuine basically the system says yes so again another one you can do here is you don't really have to add anything or change anything here the only one you want to click is this one here and then make sure overwrite existing entries is done and then basically click enable. That sets up what's called a generic SPF. And you can see it's included the IP. This is uh, a string that you might want to uh, save and put somewhere safe. But this verifies that everything coming from here is good to go. So now we'll go back and we can see that SPF is now set up. So there we go. That is you all configured, but again, if you're not technically inclined, I can't say this enough, we are not responsible for your DKIM, SPF records, and um, however your host is configured. There's too many hosts, we can't be everything to everybody. So again, bottom line message, check with your host to make sure that everything is configured right, that you're all good to go. If you're having any mailing send out problems, your first port of call is to check with your host. So can't say that enough, I guess, um, but, uh, the other thing is, once you're all ready and you're all configured and everything else, create a little test mailing list. A little list, maybe you've got four or five different emails on. Um, a good, another good test is to send, you know, make sure you've got a Gmail address in there. Maybe you're sending to um, your Facebook address as well. Again, if it's routed through Facebook, they'll, you know, they go through all the different checks. So again, you can check that you've got everything configured and set up correctly to maximize your email delivery. Like I say, a lot of the uh, third party servers, they have their own setup. Check with them about SPF, DKIM and everything else. Um, and you're good to go. But again, if you're using your own host, this is the way to do it. And uh, you, you're rocking and rolling. You're able to deliver and have massive success that way. You'll get a lot less spam complaints, a lot less mail tagged as spam, and you will make sure that you reach the inbox as you should do in every instance. And if you're throttling, if you're not going out like crazy, trying to send a million emails a minute and uh, everything else, then again, you will get to the inbox. And that is the main thing with email marketing. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video in a few moments.